Teleunión Latina, uniendo los latinos a nivel global. We're live. To all my Facebook friends. Aquí, on the screens, uno de los cantantes, eh, uno de los cantantes más persistentes, más poderosos, que ha nacido en el área del sur de la Florida. Hector Controversy. What's up, my bro? ¿Cómo está? ¿Cómo está? ¿Qué hola? ¿Qué, qué hola? ¿Qué vuelta? ¿Qué hola? Mi hermanito, yo, yo quiero que toda mi gente te conozca. Yo quiero que todo mi público de todas las partes del mundo conozca el talento que hay adentro de ti. Yo quiero que se conozca más afuera del sur de la Florida. I know you've done plenty for, for the hip hop genre over here yeah. in South Florida. But it's time for, 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 for you. It's time for your music. Que se vaya a, a todos los rincones del mundo. Las cámaras son tuyas, mi hermanito. All right. First of all, so, so you guys can understand my background. Uh, when I was 17 years old, which you basically know, I had the opportunity to collaborate with one of Miami's biggest radio DJ by the name of DJ Laz. Uh-huh. And... I had a lot of people used to put me down and tell me that I was never, ever going to do a song with DJ Laz until one day I sent him a demo to Power 96, his ex-radio uh, station. Right. And uh, when I sent it to him, I basically did a small demo with one of his old songs, which was from his second album, which was called 808 Kick Drum. Right. And I wrote the lyrics to that song, sent it to Power 96, and the man went ahead and told me, yo, I like your voice. I, you gave me... This inspiration to work on another album, let's do it. So, you know, make long story short, the man gave me the opportunity to work with him after so many people put me down and said I wasn't. And, you know, being a dad that I was only 17 years old, I was still a kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? To have somebody respect yeah. your talent in that kind of way. Yeah. You know, that was a big, a big That's opportunity. A big... But, you know, unfortunately, you know, the music business is, you know, winding roads that if you don't yeah. know your shit around, you know what I mean? Things happen. Yeah. So basically, you know, I didn't know my craft and, you know, I am where I am now, but, you know, it's basically my fault. Yeah. Uh, I don't have no hard feelings to nobody. Right. Because, you know, you learn along the way. Yeah. Um, but I slowed down a while, you know, I, I, I had three kids and, you know, I had to be a family man and I let music down for a little while, but then I got myself back into producing yeah. music and writing more songs and basically I'm... I'm, I'm actually doing it for the love. I'm not actually doing it to try to be famous. I'm right. doing it because it's something that I love to do. Exactly. Now, if something along the way comes up where somebody says, hey, you know, uh, uh, produce me a song, you know, which I have people lined up. For those of you that, that know, uh, uh, I know um, Afro Rican, one of the members of Afro Rican, which his name is uh, Derek Ramy. He's uh -huh. one of them. And I'm already producing like two songs for him because he wants to try to come out with something new. So, you know, it's, it's just a lot of people that I've met along the way that I'm trying to build up, you know, my reputation, which, you know, thank God, you know, a lot of people like what I do. That's the most important part. Because what you do, you do it well, my bro. Yeah. Yo te conozco bien a ti. Y usted es uno de los, de los talentos grandes, de los, de los talentos, the hidden talents of our South Florida. And people like me and other people We're, we're, go, we're, poco a poco vamos a, a dejar que todo el mundo conozca de tu música because you've been working on this on your craft for many many years yeah. esa es la idea I, um, I, want, I, I, want, uh, I want you to be able to tell my viewers you know, where could we find Hector Controversy's music on the internet so they can hear you well you can look me up on SoundCloud under uh, Controversy, which is spelled, not as you hear it, but spelled K-O-N-T-R-A-V-E-R-S-E dash C, as Controverse, verse, that's why I used it like the Controversy, but, you know, you can find me on SoundCloud, uh, you can hit me up on YouTube, search me up under my real name, Hector Rosado, whatever you want, you know, follow me, whatever you guys want to do, um, on my SoundCloud, you basically can hear all kinds of beats that I produce, and... You know, music that I write, rap that I have sung, everything together is all on my SoundCloud. 
Right. So if you guys want to follow and share, be my guest. Yeah, Hector, let me ask you a question. Till now, which one of your song is the one that has gotten more more played? Uh, radio play or, you know, which one out of all your art? I mean, I would say it would be the one from DJ Laz, but, you know, that's still something that's, that, that's old, you know. I mean, I still get royalty checks out of that, so oh, that's wow. a good part. ¿Cómo se llama you know, esa canción, Hector? King of Bass. King? That one is the same title as DJ Laz's third album. It's called King of Bass. So that's the one that I sing when I was 17. Yeah, my voice doesn't sound like it now, but remember I was, I was a young kid. Va vamos a explicarle al público eh, eh, quién es, quién es eh, eh, Laz. Ok. DJ Laz is still one of Miami's biggest radio pioneers that there is. Right. To this day, regardless. DJ Laz was actually the first uh, Latin producer to fuse together merengue and booty shaking music at his time. The very first song that ever came out to light that he ever produced was Mami El Negro. El Negro. Mami yep. El Negro está rabioso. I remember yep. that track. What year was this, bro? This was 1991. 91, bro. So when DJ Last came out with that, all hell broke loose in Miami because That's that was right. just like a different type of fusion. I remember that, bro. I didn't really become a big fan of DJ Last until he hit his second album, which was the Journey to Bass album. That was like my favorite album of all. When I heard his his journey to bass, I just said, you know what, this guy, this this guy's incredible. And you know, I had a lot of people that used to tell me, I know Laz, I'm gonna try to help you out with him, but you know, unfortunately, it wasn't it wasn't that easy to get you. Now, it's not easy like now. Now we have all this social media and all this kind of crap that you could just meet anybody easy. That's right. Back then, it wasn't like that. It was it was word of mouth. It was trying to get to get to that person. So you know, I, I did what I had to do. You know, the first actually the demo that I did. I did it such a bootleg way that I did it with uh, uh, two boomboxes. One boombox played his 808 kick drum. Realize. The other boombox was a blank tape, and I just sang in between it and made my demo. And that's how I sent it to Pioneer Six, because I didn't have no money to go into a studio. That's right. And when I sent it to the radio station, last he liked it. He gave me a title. As a matter of fact, I'm going to tell you really quick how that King of Bass was born. I remember when I first met Laz, and I showed him, you know, and I met him at Pioneer the Six. He told me um, that, that in a few days, you know, a few weeks, we were going to go into the studio and start working for a song. I was like, okay, cool. I remember he was going to go do a, a show in Texas, and he called me about seven something at night, and he says, hey, Hector, I have the song for you to write. I said, sure, what is it? He said, it's called King of Bass, so go ahead and write it. So before he hanged up the phone, I go, wait, wait, hold up, hold up, last. But I need the beat. I need to know what the song sounds like. I don't want to write something that's not going to sound good. So he tells me, no, 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 I have faith in you. Go ahead and write it. I said, shit, okay, cool. So I had to get a piece of paper and I wrote to myself, what in the hell is a king of bass? I know what a king does. I know what bass is. But if I'm trying to, if I'm trying to let the public know someone who hears the song and the title says king of bass, what the hell is a king of bass? So I went ahead and I started writing the song. I started writing it as if I was writing a letter. Like 15 minutes later, I called him while he was still in the airport. And I said, Laz, I got the song done. He goes, you're kidding. I says, no, I got the song done. He goes, oh, my God, I can't wait to come back. The minute he came off uh, the plane, three days later, he calls me and says, meet me in Power 96. I shot myself the Power 96. He did his little mix show that he used to do back in the days. Once that was done, we went to his house, got in his truck. He put the song on. I listened to it. He played it again. He said, let's go sing it. As soon as I wrapped it, he says, that's it. Tomorrow morning, 11 o'clock in the morning, we're in the studio recording it. And that was That's all she wrote after that. And that's what he believed in me because he's like, wow, you really do have some kind of talent. You know, you're very talented for being 17 years old. So, you know, that's how that song was born. And, of course, you know, I wrote other songs that didn't come into his album, which was, uh, uh, I remember it was a, a booty shaking mix of, of la song, the song La Flaca from uh, Coco Ban. I wrote the whole complete song, but he never used it. So, you know, that was down the drain. But, you know, the point is that, you know, I collaborated so much in that King of Bass album that that to this day, that was the most sold album put together ever that he's ever made. You know, so I'm proud of that because I'm, I'm, I'm a part of that era. You know, I'm a part of that bass music era, that booty shaking music era. I'm, you know, I'm, just like you, you're, you're a part of the freestyle. The freestyle music, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's. If, if if a person doesn't love music, man, I don't know. I don't. I honestly can tell you, if you're in it for the love, or you're in it for the money. 
And honestly, me right now, I'm 39 years old. I'm not going to be in it for the money because I'm going to be 40. You ain't going to see a Dr. Dre at 50 like he's doing it. You know, th that's not me. Uh huh. But, hey. Listen, I, the, what, my, my, my understanding of, 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 uh, of the arts, bro, it's the art. That's it. Yeah. You know, el arte tiene que ganar. Uno lo hace por el arte. Uh, and if you do your craft well, you know, sooner or later, you know, everything is going to be okay. Pero lo primero, y esto es muy, muy bueno lo que tú estás diciendo, porque yo conozco muchos chamaquitos nuevos que están comenzando, de que tienen mucho hambre de hacer dinero, pero muy poca ganas de hacer música. Yeah. Yo le digo, oye, mi hermano, you're going to have to flip it. Flip it. L listen, nowadays, if you look at music nowadays, it's not even about what the artist is saying anymore. That's what makes music so... So, how do you call it? Uh, I, I can't even put words to what music is today. It makes no sense. Back then, it was a mix of, of what the artist had to say. Now, right now, with these little young kids, these little millennials, how you call them, they're worried about what's the hottest beat. Yeah. You know, so basically, you're giving the producer more of the opportunity than you as an artist. So you're not... You're not Da, dame tu, tu, tu opinión eh, sincera de lo que bueno de, de lo que está sucediendo en la en the hip hop game nowadays the lyrics and the music you know I, I know a lot of people are complaining about you know the lyrics but is the beat what do you what what's, what do you think what's your perspective on this listen the beats <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put it the best way I can ever put it because he's one person I've ever respected as an artist, and that is Tupac Shakur. And Tupac said it best. He said, "If you don't have the music, I mean, if you don't have the lyrics and you don't have the beat, then you don't have the chemistry. Simple as that. So if you're worried about what beat is playing, the hottest beat, and you as an artist want to be taken serious, you're in the wrong business because you know th these young kids they, they weren't about." The, the, the hottest track, but yet when they're rapping, they make no sense. What are you telling me? You know what I mean? What, what am I? What, are, what message are you trying to give me to someone who's growing up in music, listening to what you have to say? You're just telling me stuff that I've already heard many years ago. You're not, you're not telling me anything new. You're not an original artist. That's the problem with nowadays music. You need to be original and capture what people are saying. Listen, when I rap my songs, I don't rap old type of stuff. I rap things that are nowadays. I rap things that I'm used to. I rap things that I know about. And I embarrass too many people when I rap. I embarrass them because they're still rapping preschool type rap while I'm graduating from high school rap. You know Hector, what I mean? Where can we, where, where, where can we catch a, a, a glimpse of, of you performing? Where, where, where are you going to be performing next? Shit, not right now. I mean, I, I you, you performed not too long ago. Yo el otro día vi unos posts que tú estuviste en no sé qué parte. That was at a that was at a club that they have in South Beach called uh, Miami Live. That they you know if anybody wants to go go to Miami Live. You know you you want to go there and, and try to perform your your music. Be my guest. That's where a lot of artists are trying Miami to Miami Live. So, so for the for the hip hop artists who are listening to us from other places of the United States or anywhere in the world, cómo se llama este club Miami Live. Yeah, it's a, it's a club in, in, in South Beach called Miami Live. It's on 9th Street, and I don't remember the I don't remember the address right about now. But I know since you guys can look it up online. It's called Miami Live. That's a club. Well, and, you get the, and you get the opportunity to uh, to expose your music there too. Yeah, yeah. There's 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 a uh, there's an artist there. I mean, there's a DJ there by the name of uh, DJ Caesar that he's uh, collaborated and he's a part of uh, Hugo Diaz. That's another thing I gotta let you know about. Hugo Diaz is part of the, the production group of the Diaz Brothers, which they are the ones that produced Pitbull when his first album came out. Okay. That's what a lot of people don't know who he is. Hugo Diaz is, a, is a, an acquaintance of mine. I'm not going to say he's a friend. He's an acquaintance. Okay. So one of the songs that I have on my, on my uh, SoundCloud is actually I purchased the beat from him, and I rapped it. And, but still, it's, it's still a business that, you know, that he is more looking into something way bigger than what it is. You know what I mean? But Hugo Diaz, like I said, he's one of the persons that 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 produced Pitbull's first album along with his brother, Lou Diaz. And, you know, 
That's where people took off because of them. Eh, Hector, una ¿cuál es tu percepción acerca, digamos, del fenómeno de, de Pitbull? ¿Cómo te parece todo lo que ha pasado con, con, con Pitbull? You really want me to tell you something? He's, no disrespect to Pitbull. I think he's an, he's an okay artist. I'm not going to say he's a great artist. Because great is Biggie Smalls. Great is Tupac. Great is uh, Rakim. Those are great artists. Pitbull is an okay artist. What, what, what disappoints me about Pitbull is the fact that when he first came out, he was this this uh this thug type of rapper that he wanted people to listen to what he, what Miami streets are. He was all about Miami. <clears throat> Now that he is blown up, he's Mr. Commercial. You know what I mean? And that's a disappointment because you know you got to stick to your roots. Every once in a while, yeah, he throws out Miami what not, but you know, I still think that his 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 way of changing music to be commercialized You know, in, in the long run, it doesn't make you as important as an artist as you were before because you're basically selling yourself. You know what I mean? You're not, you, you're basically trying to be out there from what's out there. That's not, I mean, I guess in the music business, it's like that. You know, it's, it's trying to keep your name out there. But there's many ways to keep your name out there. And I just feel that, you know, he took the wrong, the wrong direction to me as an artist. How would you describe your, your music? How? Uh, my music is basically describing me, who I am, the things that I went through. I think you heard one of the songs I did uh, uh, not so long ago where it was called Behind Bars, where, you, where I talk about at Grandma's house, why I sold drugs at Grandma's house, you know, things like that. You know, that song right there is a very personal song because, you know, I went through a lot of stuff growing up, a lot of stuff. And that's basically what rap is. Rap is a form of of poetic music okay. like a, like music poetry, poetry as you want to call it and, and 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 it's a way to 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 be able to free yourself from from a lot of things you know it inspires you to write things it inspires you to to take things off your chest and let people know what you've been through where you've been at you know mm -hmm. but if, if you start talking about things that make no sense you know what are you doing you know you're not you're not letting me visualize what you're going through You know, it's like it's like writing an R&B song, a love a love ballad. You know, when you write those type of songs, a hundred percent of the, uh, of those songs that are written are based from real life experiences. You know, every single artist out there that has written a song, where the love, where the rapper, what you call it, it has been because of a, of a, an experience they have went through. And when another person listens to that, they say, "Wow, I remember I went through that. That's exactly what I'm going through. I've been through that." You know, but now, like I said, now with these young kids, when they rapping about <laughs> being in a club, drinking, getting high, uh, shooting money on these girls, uh, <laughs> that, you're not telling me anything. You know what I mean? You're not telling me nothing. Hector, y, y una pregunta. Colaboraciones que tú has hecho con, con diferentes artistas from the South Florida area? <sighs> a lot of collaborations I haven't really messed with. I just know people. That's, that's the problem, you know. I haven't really gotten into that level of collaborating with a lot of them. Because a lot of them basically are more busy into doing what they need to do. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's easy like this. People nowadays are more into doing what they want to do for themselves rather than try to help you out. So this, in, in, this, in this type of music business, you know, it's either do yourself first and worry about others later. So a lot of collaborations I have, and I'm working on projects with certain people. That's a different thing. But other than that, you know, until then, I haven't really collaborated. You, te gusta, eh, eh, do you like your, your, the mixture of Spanish and English? I've seen you doing that. Meterle tu, tu palabrita en español. Yeah, it's, it's good. It's good to do it because, you know, uh, uh, you know, you, you can't forget your roots. What's your background, you bro? Forget, huh? What's the background? What's your background? My background, half Cuban, half Puerto Rican. Mira para eso. Tremenda That's mezcla. Lo mejor de lo mejor. Para que tú yep. sepas. Yep. I like that, But bro. I mean, hey. Music is, 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 is a love that someone has to admire, you know what I mean? So, however people want to take it, that's, Hector, that's how you do it. ¿A quién tú estás mirando hoy en día? Who do you admire nowadays? Who? As in, the an in the hip-hop game. I still admire Dr. Dre. Dr. Dre. Es un bestia. Dr. Dre es un bestia. I still admire him. Uh, to this day, dead or alive, Biggie and Tupac, okay. the best. Que to tú, this day. Dime una cosa, digamos... Eh, ¿Qué un artista como tú eh, puede pensar, digamos, de un artista como Eminem? ¿Qué te, qué, ¿What's your perception of Eminem's music? 
Eminem to me is a god on the mic. I'm sorry. I don't give a damn if people get offended with what I'm about to say, but the only reason people don't like Eminem is because he is white. And for the fact that Eminem is dominating an all-black music industry, he's sitting on top and no one is ever going to take him down. Moment. That's the problem. Un momentico. Because I want my viewers to start commenting on this stuff. Because he is white. ¿Cómo fue eso? Repito, a ver qué me dice mi gente. Because he is white sitting on a black industry sitting on top and he cannot be knocked down till at least my opinion and i have seen people try him and they cannot knock him down straight out eminem is a battle rapper an old school battle rapper that he himself has said it through a bunch of interviews that he learned how to battle rap when he used to get bullied and everything and he would sit and and just anything that was around his room he would rap about it he would just make fun of it until he became good and he crafted himself to be a battle rapper eminem you could put him without any music and just sit him there and he will embarrass you he will make you get <laughs> get back inside your mom and i don't know what, what what else but he will make you do like a fucking ostrich to stick your head in the damn ground because he will kill you yeah uh. Luis, Luis Quiles, Luis, my bro, what do you think of uh, of Eminem as a rapper? Deja ver si Luisito me dice algo. Bueno, anda por ahí. Oh, he, he, he'll put something now. Um, entonces, when do we see you? When can we see you live? What 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 what's going on? When? Uh, well, when I have another opportunity to go perform at Miami Live, you know, I'll, I'll make sure. Best around. Dice me Luis que the best around. So Luis. Do you think Eminem is, is, uh, is, is talented, my bro? Ahora, ahora me contesta. Ahora contesta. So, uh, yeah, I love this, this whole Facebook live. It's amazing, bro. Um, but think big, big pun, still the best. He thinks that the... No, big, hold up, yeah, big pun. Yes, he That's is. That's another one. Big pun, rest in peace. That guy right there, you know who discovered him? Who the discovered? one that discovered him was Fat Joe. Fat Joe. Me no he was the one that discovered him because he found him doing a cypher in New York. And people were all around this guy. And he was trying to figure out who the hell is this guy rapping or see what was the commotion. And when he sees this big, this big Puerto Rican in the middle going at it, just freestyling, he just took him up under his wing. And that was it. Hector, you know that I, yo no sabía esto que tú me acabas de decir. It, this is so yeah. amazing that we can go live and inform people of the. Yo no sabía de que Fat Joe. Yeah. Que Fat, Fat Joe fue Fat el Joe que descubrió a Big yep. Pun. Yep. That, at least that's the stories that I've read. And, you know, and it has come out of his mouth himself that those were, that, that he discovered him in, in, in one of those, uh, those neighborhoods in New York. He's seen a bunch of guys doing what they call a cypher, which a whole bunch of them are in a circle, and there's someone's in the middle rapping, battle rapping. Yeah. And Fat Joe Mira, went in there. You know? hablando, de, hablando de promoters, I got Luis on the, en la línea. Luis, mira, te voy a introducir a uno de los mejores raperos, uno de los mejores cantantes de hip hop de todo el sur de la Florida. Es el señor que tú estás viendo en las pantallas. So for, for, the, for future shows in the area of Philadelphia, ahí está el tipo. Because I only bring the best in what I see. Y él es uno de los mejores de South Florida. Thanks, man. Así que, claro, mi hermanito. Representando. Y toda una persona que siempre... A ver, dice Luis. We should do hip-hop battles. Mira, con este que joderse, para que tú sepas. Este <coughs> chamaco, este chamaco la pichea en HD, en estéreo, para que tú sepas. El que se tira arriba de un escenario con Hector. He better be prepared, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm not a battle rapper because... All right, let me tell you something about battle rap. I, don't, I, I like watching battle rap, but to me, it sometimes doesn't make no sense. You know what I mean? To me, I'm more of the kind of person that I like to write my music. I like to take he time. Said, with he said, music. I can get Chris Rivers here. Oh, hell no. Nah. That's, that's Pun's son. Did you do that, bro? Who's Chris River? Pun's son. Oh, yeah. Ah, mira para eso. Ah, mira, verdad que sí. ¿verdad? Claro, si Luis es amigo de, de toda esa gente. My yeah. boy Luis is from, from, from Philly. Oh, muchacho. Hector, bro, when you go to Philly, bro, you're going to really 
Te va a gustar mucho Philly. Ahí sí hay tremendo movimiento. Allí sí, el Philly está caliente, ¿verdad que sí? Yo tengo, I got a little chant that I made for Philly. Que dice, Philly, Philly, that's where I wanna be. I wanna go back to Philly. Philly, <laughs> Philly, that's where I wanna be. I, wa I, I love Philly, bro. Y Philly tiene un movimiento durísimo. A ver, ¿qué dice? But overall... Sí, claro, hijo. Claro. Pero, pero eso es um, our Latin freestyle. Eso es otra cosa. Pero aquí está ahora el tipo el grande de, de, de hip hop en español. En, en español y en inglés del sur de la Florida. De, de, thanks, thanks. Ya. Yeah. Como... Eh, eh, bueno, y hablando de, la, de todo, por ejemplo, por decirte eh, de las cosas que ha hecho Pitbull, eh, eh, ¿cuál es la, la que más la que más respeto tú le das, digamos, no? No, I respect his music now. Like, I think the one that he did collaboration with Christina Aguilera, I think I think that one was nice. I think that song right there. I forgot the, the name of the song, but um, wow, I can't even remember the name of the song. Everybody knows that one. It's the only one he did with Christina Aguilera. The only one. I think that's 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 a very nice song that he did. That's a good collaboration. Oh, yeah. you know any insights about how that that happened? Porque yo lo único que recuerdo un buen día escuchar una canción que decía culo. Esa nevita que está tan rica que tiene tremendo well, culo. But that's 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 where he got his name out. That he was just remaking other people's songs, yeah. making it his way. And that's what he did. But aquí dice Julian, take take on me. Qué vuelta, Julian. What it do, son? A, a Julian es a Julian es otro un, un buen productor del área que I think I think you would like to work with him con 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 Hector o sea sería we, you know what we all gotta start working together bro just doing collaboration that's what it's all about y re, obviamente dándole bastante respeto a nuestra área you know yeah so hoy yeah. entonces estábamos hablando de de está, imagínate lo que te iba a decir estábamos hablando de del culo de <laughs> Christina Aguilera. Como, como, como se, como, how did that happen? How, how did, how did Pitbull make it into, into power, bro? How did that happen? All right. A lot of people, I don't know, well, I don't know if people know, but I mean, imagine Pitbull's from Miami, so if you're not from Miami, you don't know his old background. Right. Pitbull was discovered by Luther Campbell, mm -hmm. a.k.a. Luke Skywalker from okay. the Two Life Crew. Mm -hmm. That's how Pitbull got discovered. When he uh, did uh, on, on Luke's old album, there was a song called Lollipop, the remix. And that's where Pitbull first came out. Because he was introduced by someone to Luke. And Luke was impressed by, the, by his, his rapping ability. That he gave him the opportunity to go ahead and sing the remix of Lollipop. And <laughs> that's it. Lil John took him up under his wing and th that's all she wrote. So that's where Pitbull got discovered. Because of Luke. Luke has been... The one that has paved the way for so many Miami artists, from Rick Ross to Trick Daddy. I mean, you name it. He's Uncle Al, you name it. Luke has been opening up doors for so many Miami music people. Mm -hmm. They say Luke, so, Levin, trying to rebuild the studio after three years raising my daughter. L love songwriting, consider myself a studio artist. Ah, está bien, está bien. Ese es Julian. Julian es un personaje. Eh, 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 coño y blessing para, para ti para tu familia y para tu hija eh, oye qué otra cosa te quería preguntar Héctor eh, eh, pero esta música que estoy escuchando tuya que está oscura con una cantidad de acordes you're you making like where are you where's your feeling these days that music is so la veo grande it's big with a lot of heavy dark code uh, Well, okay, like I said earlier, earlier in, uh, in this interview where I said that, you know, music is, is, is an inspiration for somebody to write, you know what I mean? Right. Music gives someone the ability to try to create things that they're feeling at the moment. So, like, I, I think you heard one of the songs that's called What You Want. When I wrote that song, that song is actually a, 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 I'm, a pissed, I'm a pissed off person type of song. Because I was tired of people always telling me, you can't rap, you're full of shit, you don't have no talent, you're nobody, you're this, you're that. So I went in and I said, you know what, turn that anger into energy, write down, write some shit, pretend that there's somebody in front of me that I don't even like, that he keeps on insulting me, and I'm just going to put something together, and that was what I did. I ended up putting that song together, and that song says what you want, and it's basically telling you to kiss my ass. You know, so, I mean, you got to take advantage of the ability and your talent. That's how I see it. When it comes to producing music, it's the same thing. Take advantage of your talent. If you're upset, 
Matter of fact, speaking of, of, of making music, when I'm in my car driving at work or wherever, I, I make a beat in my head, and it doesn't go away. So I have to come home, and when I come home, I go on my Fruity Loops, and I get on there, and I start recreating that from what I hear, and then, man, I, I, I'll create a beat within 30 minutes. So Just you, from listening to it. You get, you get woken up in the middle of the night by that musical ghost, bro? Like, yo, bro, we gotta, we, bro, we gotta, we gotta do something. Uh, una, you la hora so You're like, yo, bro, I gotta go to sleep, man. I gotta go to work tomorrow. I ain't if got that no goes, time for this. Me on my show and it says, go create something. I'm gonna tell him to kiss my ass because I'm sleeping. But I'll wake up the next day and believe me, I'll sit in my computer and I'll sit there and I'll, I'll try to recreate what I heard. And when it comes out, believe me, it's just, I'll, I'll actually sit there until I perfect it. Dice Luisito que bueno, que hip hop nowadays is more of a commercial thing. Is that? It is. It is. It is. That's what I'm saying. These millennials now, they, it's all about the beat. It's not even about what they're saying. You know, and that's, that's pathetic. That's the most part about it. It's, it's pathetic that you can't, you can't actually hear good music anymore. You have to sit down and go on YouTube or, or Pandora and listen to what we used to listen to, the 90s type of music, the 80s type of music. You know what I mean? Just to be able to enjoy Déjame music. Déjame ver qué dice eh, eh, Julian. Dice, millennials have bad taste when it comes to their favorite hip-hop artists. Believe it or not, My favorite right now is Drake. Think he is yep. super talented. ¿Qué tú, qué tú piensas? Yeah, I'm telling you, Dr. Drake, 50 years old and the man still got it. Drake. And another thing, another, now that I say Dr. Drake, he is one person that I have admired as far as when you make music. I have some bullshit ass little speakers to create my music. They're not all these big type of shit, but the part about what I respect about what Dr. Drake said, he said, If your shit sound good out of some cheap speakers, imagine what it sounds like on some real shit. And that's what I do. When I hear my shit coming out of my speakers and they, and they sound good, I'll say, okay, I'm ready to hear it in the system. When I put my shit in somebody's car system, man, I'm Oye, in love. Díceme, Julian, que, eh, díceme, Julian, que, que eh, eh, you, uh, the other one, Drake. You think Drake is talented, bro? <sighs> Drake, Drake is talented in his own way. But Drake has been, you could go to YouTube and search it up yourself. I didn't believe it. But you'll go to YouTube and search. And Drake has been stealing snippets from other people's lyrics that are old. And he'll kind of throw it into some of his shit. And people don't know that. But somebody has, has actually deciphered his lyrics. And they have been able to see that he has been stealing music from other people. You Julian, know, that's, that's you, are, you, are you listening to this, Julian? Do you know anything about this? Lo que está hablando Hector. Vamos a ver qué me dice. Vamos a ver qué me dice. De que se está, o sea, que basically what he's doing is... Uh, he's, he's, uh, he's stealing other people's lyrics. He's taking the general idea of other songs. Yeah. It's like saying, for example, that he took uh, two lines from uh, old Rakim type of music or, or a, 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 a little verse off of Biggie Smalls' music. You know, and, 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 and you know things that people won't even listen to. And they'll say, well, I heard that before. You know what I mean? But he's actually has been doing it. It's 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 out there. Drake, they say uh, Drake is doing that. FKR, chamaco, ¿qué es eso de FKR? What is FKR, bro? Drake is doing that FKR. Three years now. No sé qué quiere decir eso. Entonces dice Julian, people uh, have been stealing samples from other artists. Conchale loco, espera un momentico. Artists making millions, including Pitbull and Puff Daddy and beyond. Yep. ¿Qué tú yep. Eso? yep. And that is a proven fact. Don't get me wrong. I sample other people's music. I sample, for example, I have a song that I created from, uh, wow, what's that, uh, that song, Sweet Dreams, uh, Annie Lennox, from okay. Annie Lennox. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I went ahead and I, and I recreated a hip-hop version of Annie Lennox and Sweet Dreams. I'm not going to post it because SoundCloud has gotten a little tight on uh, copyrights. So if I put it up there, they're going to block me. So I haven't posted it. But yeah, I, I'll do the same Con thing. Head to the, now that you're speaking about this, I was talking to someone uh, a little while ago about uh, the copyright uh, um, uh, rights. I, 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 uh, I feel... That I feel that in the last 20 years, uh, you know, everything has been a game. But now things are getting really serious. You know, I'm getting a BMI check. Yep. You know, I'm getting look, a BMI check. Look how serious it is. When I, was going, when I was going to school for radio school last year to Miami Media School, 
Espérate un momentico, a ver qué dice. But the people don't seem to have a problem about it. And look how big Drake is now. What do you think of that, bro? Yeah, that's true. That is some true stuff because Drake Drake has been... It's not only Drake, you know, it's, uh, uh, Lil Wayne, uh, all of them. All of them have been... Okay, matter of fact, the last the last person to use something that was sampled, Nicki Minaj using uh, Sir Mix-a-Lot's uh, Baby Got Back, where she had uh, the song Anaconda. It's the same shit. She, they, they stealing it. They're using it. But hey, if, if it's okay for them to use it, go ahead. The problem is with them is that they're so young that they don't, they disrespect that type of music. You know, they feel that they're above anyone that was before them. You know what I mean? So that's the problem with nowadays music. You know, she, as a matter of fact, uh, Nicki Minaj has gotten into the feud with uh, Lil Kim, disrespecting her. Talk about it, she's better than Lil Kim. If you look at all of Nicki Minaj's albums and poses and hair colors and all kinds of crap, she is biting Lil Kim to the max. And that's what a lot of people don't see. These young people don't know who the fuck is Lil Kim. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to see all the poses, all the things that she has done, and she is killing Lil Kim. And Lil Kim responded to her one day and saying, you're stealing my shit. Yeah. And the day her and Lil Kim go at it, believe me, Lil Kim will wipe her ass clean with that little girl. Because she ain't got nothing on her. Entonces, bueno, hablando de, of the copyright uh, uh, things, I believe that things are getting really, really serious now, really strict. You know, And I believe that in the future, you know, um, you know, we're, we're going to be getting paid for for everything that, you know, what, todo lo que se, se le cogen a otro artista, you know, we're going to, everybody's going to be getting paid the way, you know, the way it's supposed to be. Look, just so you know, Facebook, Facebook Live. If you're in the club somewhere and you're Facebooking live and there's a song that is on the radio playing in the background and you're Facebooking live, Facebook is going to shut it down. They're not going to let you post it. Because they're saying to avoid copyright infringement. So they'll shut you down. You won't be able to post your Facebook live. Wherever you go, if there's a song playing, even if you're in your car, Facebook live and something is on the radio, they're going to shut it down. They're not going to let you post it. That's how serious Facebook is about that. I like that. I like that because... Uh... You know, for the first time in my life, I am getting a small amount of my royalty checks. Yep. Chiquitico, pero tú sabes qué? Eh, 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 not true. Uh, ¿Qué es lo que dice Luisito? Not true. I have been, have where? Where you been, bro? I don't know, bro. I don't know. Luis is bugging out or something. Where you at, bro? Oye, a ver, espérate, dice. Oh, hold on. No disrespect, but that's how the world is. Out with the old and in with, and the, in new. with the new. That's Regina true. Regina Rodriguez said that. ¿Qué tú crees? That's true. It's true. Out with the old and with the new. But, you know, I, I, I respect that comment. It's, it's okay to, to enjoy something new. But, you know, you got to give credit what credit is due also. Okay. You know, you can't sit there as an artist and act as if, You know, your craft is better than, than, the, than the ones from before you. When everybody knows music is recycled, plain and simple, music is the only type of thing that is recycled. Because there has been music, as far as, like, New York. In New York, there's a lot of, they, they, back in the 80s and 90s, they used a lot of jazz type of fusion. And those jazz music, you're talking about from the 20s, the 30s. Yeah. It was recycled music into something modern. So... Yeah, I understand. Out with the old, in with the new. You gotta enjoy, but give respect. Hector, eh, antes que nos vayamos, because, you know, I I forgot to charge my... my eh, la batería la tengo chiqui bajita. So, but I want to be able, for everyone who's watching, I want them to know your name so they can find your music on YouTube. Porque yo creo que tu música está tan, está tan poderosa, tan llena. I mean, it's you, bro. I mean, your music is you. What you see is what you get. Esta persona yep. que ustedes están viendo manifestándose, the way that he speaks, that's what you're going to get. <laughs> that's crazy, bro. Yep. Um, a manifestation of, of, of who you are. And that's the, I love that because if one thing I really, really, really love es eh, eso legitimate. You, you know, you're not swinging from one thing to another. You know, you got your concept, it's it, it's what you're feeling, and you're going to print it, bro. And, and, it, and it comes across. You, you print yep, it. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Thanks, yeah. Yeah. ¿Cuál es el nombre? Porque I know your name is kind of tricky. It's Hector Controversy, pero ¿cómo se escribe Controversy? Okay, Controversy is spelled K-O-N-T-R-A 
B E R S E dash C for controversy. You can find me on SoundCloud. Just type up that name, you'll find me. Um, you can search me on Instagram at The Real Controversy Music. Uh, look me up as Hector Rosado on Facebook. However, I'll, I'll, I'll be around. Don't worry, I'll accept everybody. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm good. But, bro, let me tell you something. Uh, a mí me ha gustado mucho la mezcla que tú haces con merengue. Tú le has puesto tu merengue y tu cosa allí. Hiciste el, yeah. el de Coco, ¿va? ¿No? Con Coco, ¿cuál de ahí? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh, and, and I did... Uh, Hiciste I Morena, did, ¿no? I'm... Oye, Morena. Yeah, with that, yeah, that's another one. But I got, I mean, I got a lot of songs, too. I have I have one that, uh, I don't know if you remember the the, 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 the YouTube viral video where the, the little chunky girl was dancing to a merengue song called Caballito de Palo. Caballito de Palo. And it was like, she was wearing like a little, like a do-rag or something, and she was like jumping on the broom, uh -huh. dancing a little fat chunky girl. Well... That video went viral, and I listened to that song, and I said, like, wow, I'm going to get that song. I'm going to find out who sings it, and I'm going to make a booty shaking song out of it. So that's on my on my SoundCloud. If y'all want to listen to it, go to it. Y'all see it. It's called the same title, Caballito de Palo. So till now, SoundCloud has not taken it off, which I'm okay with it. But the day they take it off, hey. So, mi, mi hermano, eh, esto, this is the first of many interviews. The first of many interviews with you. Because you're a very talented artist from the South Florida area. And I believe it's everybody's responsibility. Wherever they find, wherever we find art, I believe it's our responsibility to expose it, to tell people, to tell. As a matter of fact, quick, 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 uh, now that you say about, about, about music, really quick, I want to ask something about Eminem really quick before we get off. A lot of people really don't know how Eminem was discovered, okay? Eminem was discovered because Dre knew nothing about Eminem. When Eminem's EP, his EP, remember, it's not an LP, an EP is different. When Eminem's EP got into the hands of Jimmy Iovine, who is the CEO of Interscope Records, he handed that CD and gave it to Dr. Dre and told Dre, Dre, listen to this, um, listen to this CD, tell me what you think of the artist. Dre liked who he heard. He had no idea that Eminem was white. He says, Jimmy Ivey told him, Dre, you think you could work with him? He says, yeah, I think I could work with him. All right, we're going to fly him in. When they flew Eminem in, Eminem was in a, inside in the scope records in the uh, uh, meeting room waiting until Dr. Dre walked in. When Dre walked into the meeting room and saw who he was going to deal with, all he said to himself was, we got something here. And the rest is history. O sea, Dre no, so, sabía, no, Dre no sabía que Eminem era blanco. Dre knew nothing that Eminem was white. Mira para eso. Now, look that up if you don't believe me. That has come out of the dragon's mouth himself. Mira, dice, dice Luisito, that, that is a fact. Yep. Verdad que so, la música es loca, man. Tú sabes lo que es. The guy is, is you know, está escuchando y piensa que el tipo es moreno y cuando llega, llega un blanquito rubio. Let me tell you something. I'm, I, I, get, I get offended when somebody tells me, oh, you don't look like a rapper. You know, I'm like, I don't look like a rapper. What the hell does a rapper look like? Oh, I gotta shoot. Be black. Come on, go. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Come on, esto. So yeah. somebody have approached you and said, you don't people, look like a rapper? People. Not some people. When I tell them that I know how to rap, they laugh and they tell me, you, you don't look like no rapper. What the hell does a rapper look like? <laughs> that is. Tell that's not logisimo. What is what, what this? Look at look at now with these artists. Listen, there there's there's a white Jewish rapper by the name of Lil Dicky. Look him up on YouTube, Lil Dicky. When you see this Jewish guy, you're gonna say to yourself, "Wow, he is such a talented rapper." And he once again, like they tell me, he don't look like one. You don't look. But like when you listen to him, you're gonna be like, you you see what I'm talking about? You don't need to look like a rapper. What is a rapper? True. They said Luisito que true. Rapper? True. They said Luisito que true. So, mi, yeah, bueno, mi hermano, like I said, this is, the, the only reason why I'm leaving is because the iPad where I got you on, eh, le queda como dos, como cinco, we're almost done. So, no, no, uh, cool. yeah, pero I have enjoyed this uh, so, so much, and uh, the idea is for us to help each other, you know, Obse any information that you have, you know, uh, o sea, contáctate conmigo, let's go, let's go live. Let's go live. Right. There's plenty of people watching. Let's go live. You know, let's get the word out. Any any concerts in the area, anything, any any unique information that you have, you know, don't keep it with you. Let's let's well, see. Could you, you, could you, could you, could you be, before I go, 
I've seen you. What you you you? I seen you broadcasting. You went to broadcasting school. Yeah, yeah. I went to Miami Media School studying for radio, so uh, radio and TV. You know, I know a little bit of, of TV as well, but my main thing is trying to get into radio. So, you know, let's see what happens, man. Let's see. That's good, my bro. Viva la música, viva hip hop, eh, eh, viva nuestra raza latina, y I'll see you soon, my bro, in another All interview. Right. Dale, mi hermanito. Y para todos ustedes que me están mirando, God bless you. Y que tengan un increíble lunes, ¿ok? Nos vemos. Later, my brother. Later. All right, now. Later. Teleunión Latina. Uniendo los latinos a nivel global.